Hey everyone. So in this video, I want to go through a couple of examples uh, of completing the square, but these ones are going to be a bit more difficult than the ones we've been doing before, because these ones are going to, going, to, they're going to include fractions. So in order to be able to do this, you are going to have to be fairly familiar and fairly comfortable with how to work with fractions, uh, but I figured it would be helpful just to kind of guide you through the steps. So let's take a look at the first example. So what we have here is y is equal to 2 thirds x squared plus 4x plus 23 over 3. So I'm going to get you to notice that there's a couple of fractions in there for coefficients. Um, now, again, completing the square is taking something that looks like this, which is in standard form, and writing it in vertex form. And even though it's got fractions, the process is going to be mostly the same. So the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to toss some brackets around the first two terms. Right? And by the way, the steps that we're going to be going through, if you're, if you're not familiar with them, again, it should have come from my last video, so if you need to go back and review, that's fine. But we toss brackets around the first two, first two terms in this, uh, in this quadratic relation. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to common factor out the leading coefficient from just those first two bracketed terms. Now, in this case, the leading coefficient is 2 thirds. So we're going to take the 2 thirds and we're going to write it out front. Now, inside the brackets, we're going to ask ourselves, okay, what would I have to multiply 2 thirds by to get the terms that we had initially? Well, I know that 2 thirds times x squared gives us 2 thirds x squared that we had up in the, uh, in the brackets up top. But the next term is going to be a little bit more difficult. So 2, two thirds times what gives us positive 4x? So uh, there's a couple of ways you can go about doing this. Either you can be really, really good with your fractions, right? And you can simply just know that 2 thirds times 6 gives you 4, meaning that 2 thirds times 6x would give you 4x. Or if you weren't super comfortable with them, what you could do is you could perform a division, basically. You could take the 4 that we have up in the first set of brackets and divide it by 2 thirds to figure out what number we would have to get. So let's suppose that you went this route, you did 4 divided by 2 thirds. Well, instead of dividing by 2 thirds, usually we don't like to divide by a fraction, so we're going to turn this into multiplication. That's going to give us 4 times the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 over 2. So 4 times 3 over 2, you could multiply these two just by multiplying basically two fractions. You could take, take the 4 and change it to 4 over 1. Either way, you end up getting 12 divided by 2. And 12 divided by 2 is, of course, 6. Okay, and the idea is that means that 2 thirds times 6 would give us 4. All right, which is kind of what we said in blue over here, right? Either way, this essentially ends up meaning that if I common factor out 2 thirds uh, from the second term, that's going to leave us with plus 6x. And again, you could double check that by taking the 2 thirds and expanding it in and seeing that you're going to get essentially the bracketed stuff that we have up top. Okay, then we still have our plus 23 over 3, so I'm going to toss that in. Okay, so next step. Well, what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be, want, be wanting to put in some value k into the brackets, and that's going to force the stuff in the brackets to be a perfect square trinomial. So what's that going to look like? Well, we're going to have 2 thirds times x squared plus 6x plus some k value, and again, that's going to be a particular k value that will allow that bracketed stuff to be a perfect square trinomial. Then we have our plus 23 over 3, but then we're going to have to rebalance. Now, again, the idea is that by adding that k in, we've just changed the expression. So we need to rebalance. We basically need to undo the change. So we ask ourselves, okay, well, how did we just change this? By putting the k in there. Again, you might initially think, oh, well, you added k, so we're going to subtract it back out. But you need to remember that we took out that 2 thirds. All right? So the fact that we have the 2 thirds out front and we're going to be, we would essentially be multiplying it by the k, that means that we changed the expression by adding in 2 thirds times k. So to rebalance, we're going to actually subtract out 2 thirds times k. So that's what I write in there. Okay, so the next step is we need to figure out what that value of k has to be. Again, it's going to be a particular value of k that will allow the bracketed stuff to be a perfect square trinomial. And again, in my last video on completing the square, I showed you a quick way of getting this k value. All right, but I can kind of revisit it here. So to get k, what we're going to do is we're going to take the middle coefficient of the uh, trinomial in brackets, that's going to be the pos of 6. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to divide it by 2. So that's pos of 6 divided by 2. Then we're going to take that and we're going to square it. Okay, so let's figure out what number this is. We're going to do the pos of 6 divided by 2 first. That's going to give us pos of 3, which we're then going to be squaring. Pos of 3 squared is 9. So that means that if k is 9, then the stuff in the brackets is a perfect square trinomial, which is what we would like. Okay, so our next line is going to be where we take that 9 and we place it in where we have k. That's going to give us 2 thirds times x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 23 over 3 minus 2 over 3 times 9. 
Okay, great. So now in our next line, since the bracketed stuff is a perfect square trinomial, we should be able to factor it as a perfect square trinomial. So that's going to be one of the things we're going to do in our next line. And then the other thing we're going to do in our next line is where we took the minus 2 over 3 times 9, we should be able to simplify that a little bit. So let's see. That's going to give us 2 thirds times, if I factor x squared plus 6x plus 9, that's going to give us x plus 3 squared. And again, if you need to, I need a reminder as to do how to do that quickly, you can look at my last video on completing the square. Okay, and then we're going to have plus 23 over 3. And then negative 2 over 3 times 9, what's well, going to be negative 18 over 3? Now, if you look at negative 18 over 3, you might think to yourself, hey, negative 18 over 3, that just simplifies to negative 6. And that's true. But here's the thing. I'm going to get you to notice that we have positive 23 over, uh, 23 over 3 and then minus 18 over 3. We're going to want to combine those. Now, in order to combine them, we're going to need to make sure that we have a common denominator. And you're going to notice that they already have a common denominator of 3. If we took that minus 18 over 3 and rewrote it as negative 6, we would no longer have a common denominator, meaning that we would have to get one and blah, blah, blah. Basically, the idea is that it would make, make more work. So we're going to leave it as minus 18 over 3. Okay, so let's see, what's that going to give us? Well, we're going to have 23, sorry, not 23, 2 over 3, rather, times x plus 3 squared, and then plus 5 over 3. And the 5 over 3 comes from the fact that 23 over 3 minus 18 over 3 gives us 5 over 3. And now we have something in vertex form. So it started out in standard form, now it's in vertex form. All right, so again, it's the exact same process. We just had to kind of navigate this a little bit using some operations of the fractions, which some of you I know are going to be comfortable with, some of you are going to be less comfortable with. So why don't we do another example? So this time, let's take a look at y is equal to negative 3x squared plus 6 over 5x plus 4 over 25. So again, you're going to notice that there's some fractions in there. It's going to be the same process, but of course, we're going to need to do some operations with fractions. First step again is to bracket off the first two terms. Second step is to common factor out the leading coefficient. Now in this case, the leading coefficient is negative 3. So we're going to take that negative 3 and pull it out front. And now we're going to ask ourselves, what will we need to multiply negative 3 by to get negative 3x squared plus 6 over 5x? Well, the first term is easy. This is going to be x squared. Now, the second term is a little bit, uh, a little bit more difficult. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to notice that negative 3 times negative 2 fifths uh, gives us 6 over 5. So you could notice that, in which case you're going to end up getting minus 2 over 5x as the second term. Or again, if you're a little less comfortable with, uh, with just doing mental math like this, you could take... Um, you, you could take 6 over 5 and divide it by negative 3 to see what number you get. Okay, well, if you take 6 over 5 and divide it by negative 3, again, instead of dividing by negative 3, we kind of prefer to turn this into multiplication. So we're going to have 6 over 5 multiplied by the reciprocal of negative 3, which is 1 over negative 3. Okay, so now multiplying these across, we end up getting 6 over negative 15. Now, 6 over negative 15 can be reduced because both the numerator and denominator have a common factor of 3. And also, the negative on the bottom I don't particularly like on the bottom, so we can move it up to the top, and that's going to give us negative 2 over 5. Okay, great. So that means, essentially, that negative 3 times negative 2 over 5x should give us 6 over 5x, which is the second term we have in the brackets up top. So that means we're going to have minus 2 over 5x, and then we have our plus 4 over 25. Okay, great. In our next line, we're going to add in k into the brackets, and then we're going to rebalance. So let's see, we're going to get negative 3 times x squared minus 2 over 5x plus k, so we added in some k. Then we have our plus 4 over 25, and now we're going to rebalance by subtracting something. Now I'm just going to get you to think for a second, what is it that we're going to be subtracting? Well, notice that the leading coefficient is negative 3, right? And by putting the k inside the brackets, right, um, we basically just placed in negative 3 times k. So I'm going to be subtracting out negative 3 times k. All right, and again, it's because we have the negative 3 times the k. We added in negative 3k, so we need to subtract back out negative 3k. Okay, great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what k has to be in order to make the bracketed stuff a perfect square trinomial. So again, in order to do that, we're going to take the middle coefficient of the, um, of the bracketed stuff, so it's going to be negative 2 fifths, and we're going to divide it by 2. Now, since negative 2 fifths is already a fraction, I'm not going to do negative 2 fifths over 2. I'm going to write it as negative 2 fifths divided by 2, which is the same thing. Okay, and remember, we take that number, we divide it by 2, but then we have to square it. That's how we're going to get our k value. 
All right, well, again, instead of dividing by two, I don't really like to divide a fraction by a whole number like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna turn this into multiplication of fractions. All right, so the way that we're gonna do that is, in is instead of dividing by two, we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal of two, which is going to be negative two-fifths times one-half. And again, we need to square this number. Okay, well, negative two over five times a half, well, that's gonna give us negative two over 10, which we're squaring. Now, negative two over 10, well, the numerator has a uh, factor of two, and so does the denominator. So there's a common factor of two. Canceling that out, we get negative one over five, which we're then squaring. And then negative one over five squared is just gonna be one over 25. So there's our k value. That's the k value that would make, make the bracketed stuff a perfect square trinomial. So now we're gonna basically place it into our expression where k is. All right, and uh, so we get negative three times x squared minus two over five x uh, plus one over 25 plus four over 25. Now, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna get you to notice the line above. See how we're subtracting negative three K. Well, how about instead of subtracting negative three K, since we have a double negative, why don't we add three K, which is the same thing. So we're gonna put plus three times our K value, which is one over 25. Okay, so in our next line, we should be able to factor the bracketed stuff, which is a perfect square trinomial. And we should also be able to clean up the three times one over 25. So that's gonna give us negative three times, so factoring the trinomial is going to give us x minus one fifth all squared. All right, we have our plus four over 25, and then we have positive three times one over 25, which is gonna give us plus three over 25. Okay, and we're almost done. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the four over 25 and the three over 25, and we're gonna combine them. And four over 25 and three over 25 should add to give us seven over 25. So that means we're gonna have negative three times x minus one fifth squared plus seven over 25, which is now in vertex form. So I hope this is, these two examples have been helpful for you. Take care.